one. I'll call the meeting to order. Uh, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag uh, of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, Republic. one nation Republic. under God, <laughs> indivisible, <laughs> liberty, liberty, and justice for all. For all. We want to sing, Michelle. Woohoo! <laughs> Is that okay? Thank you, everyone. I'd like to welcome, we have our new board members tonight. Welcome, Art. Welcome, Amanda. And welcome, welcome. Uh, Ricky, back for a second meeting. Welcome back, Ricky. Glad to have a full complement of board members here. Uh, first order of business is to approve the minutes from our July 12th, 2021. If I could get a motion first on the floor, then if there's any discussion or corrections, we'll add those after. Can I get a motion? So moved, Bob. Okay, a motion by Michelle Holt to approve is a second. I'll second, Lynn. Second by Lynn Landolina, thank you. Now board members, are there any uh, corrections or discussion on it? I noticed uh, yeah. something on it. Oh, sorry. Oh. On July 12th, you have something on? Oh, July 12th? No, I'm sorry. We're I'm on July 12th right now. Then we'll do the next meeting, July 26th. Okay. Anything on July 12th from board members? Questions? No. Okay, seeing none, all those in favor of accept, accepting oh. the minutes, signify by saying aye, raising your hand. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carried unanimously. Thank you. Okay, now we go to July 26 uh, minutes. Can I get a motion on the floor first? So moved. A move by Michelle, motion to accept July 26. So I have a second. Lynn Landolino, the second. <laughs> discussion or corrections? I know there we have some, some. There was something hey. on that one I noticed. They, um, I know it said, I, I, I thought in the meeting the RTC did recommend Art Reardon, and in the notes it said, in the minutes, I'm sorry, it said that um otherwise yes uh that's correct and, and ricky bortz did bring that to my attention to an email i did receive a letter from lee sandora that i mentioned last meeting and they were recommending art rear in to fill that seat up until election day that was a discussion at the last meeting it's up till election day after that uh i'm not sure who will be running in that position uh, but he's filling that position as a temporary basis, but he was recommended. Uh, he was nominated by the Republican Town Committee. So that, that error should be corrected. Okay. Do we have any other corrections on the agenda? I do have one. Anyone else have any others? Uh, I have one. It's the last item item. Uh, we're appointing new board members. Uh, when we appointed Amanda Cormier, uh, I did abstain from voting. It said she was in unanimously. I did abstain. I did say, like I said, the meeting before, I pretty much follow how the board was going, and I think it's a board decision. And I also believe that Amanda's qualified by her own merits. She doesn't need the vote of her father to get on a board of education. She was able to do it on her own. So that's why I abstained. Not that I'm against her or anything, but it wasn't unanimous. She, she earned it on her own. So that correction, if we can make that lease, I'd appreciate it. Okay, then I'll uh, um, I'll amend my motion to be so uh, corrected. Okay, well, after we've corrected, good. Corrected, and Lynn, you'll second that with the corrections? Yep, yes. And yeah, and are there any other corrections? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye or raising your hands. Aye. 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 Okay, opposed, abstentions? Motion carried. Thank you. Okay. Next item, uh, any additions to the agenda? Anyone have any board members, any additions to the agenda? And again, let board members know if we add additions to an agenda at the night of the meeting, it needs a two thirds vote uh, to be put on the agenda. Okay. No additions to the agenda. Item one C comments from visitors regarding agenda items. We have any comments? We see anyone out there, Ray? Not yet. They usually Nothing. come to the top. I don't see any. Nothing. They just get to the top. Okay. Okay. Going down item two, a chairperson's report. Uh, we're going to start off with the capital plan. We uh, we sent everyone a copy of the capital plan. Uh, 
the facilities committee did meet with Ray Carlson. Uh, we thought that Ray Carlson might be on the meeting tonight. Uh, or not, if he is, we'll be able to uh, talk with him or talk to Missy about the capital plan additions to it. Uh, the Board of Finance meeting is going to be September 21st. So we have tonight to discuss this plan. And then our Board of Ed meeting on August 23rd would be the night we would like to approve the plan that we could present to the Board of Finance. So uh, with that said, uh, John Corcoran's not here tonight. I think he attended that meeting. Who went to the facility? Oh, John yeah. Corcoran is here, John. You did come yeah. in late. I missed you. I got you for attendance. Oh, good. Yeah. John, were, were you at that meeting? Could you bring us up to speed on some of the new things uh, as far uh, as uh, facilities so we, go? Well, we pretty much went through this. This uh, We just made some adjustments, uh, moved some things around. But uh, this is what basically what we went through. Okay. Let's see. Okay, board members taking a look at it. Uh, I guess my only question, looking at it closely, I noticed we added, you know, certainly new items. Some of those we asterisking because they're going to uh, involve our research for doing our study of the athletic fields, or are these things going to stay in these years? Was it, did the committee have any comments on that? I guess see this year we've got plans for irrigation and things like that. And I see we're going out to have a study done on all our fields. So I just, you yeah. know, was asking, did you guys discuss those things at all? You want me to give a little summary, Bob, also? Sure, Missy. I appreciate that because okay. I wasn't there. Yes. Thank you. Um, I think I shared at a previous meeting that um, this capital plan was devised with a lot of work um, and input with Ray Carlson, um, as well as our IT department and the facilities committee um, did meet uh, two or three times on the issues. So we wanted to be, have a very comprehensive plan moving forward, keeping in mind that it is a fluid plan from year to year as priorities shift. Um, so later in the agenda, there is an RFP on the table. Um, we are looking to have somebody come in and Ray will go over that once we get to that point, but that will yeah. take care of the pieces in the capital plan for the outside field facilities, including the fence, the irrigation, um, and the, uh, warning, the warning track. So what you see in front of you and at the bottom of the capital plan are some notes, because as we put this together, we are still looking for either other funding sources or other ways to kind of get the work done. So you'll see a few notes at the bottom um, of other people that we've reached out to um, in hopes of, you know, getting some good quotes um, or, like I said, looking for other funding sources. You know, we've been working really hard with the technology grant that's out there right now, but it is very, very narrow in the parameters that we're allowing for. Um, so unfortunately what we thought might be a good funding source might not be, but we don't, we don't have the door closed on that yet. We're just looking to see how best we can utilize that particular grant. And even if it's something in our operating budget, if we can remove the operating budget, you know, monies with grant funds and then move some of our, oper um, our capital needs, um, just to kind of give you a, for instance, cause I know in my head what I'm talking about, but it might not make any sense. Um, we can't purchase Chromebooks, for instance, for our students, because that's something we already do. We can't purchase um, other devices, but if we can find something we can purchase, we'll take it out of operating and kind of, you know, switch the funding around. But the, like I said, the grant, you're probably hearing a lot about the technology grant. There's a lot of money out there, but the parameters are extremely strict and we're having a hard time finding what fits for us. So other than that, that uh, five-year plan you're looking at, the facilities are our, our major concern. We have some pretty high items um, coming in the next, um, this fiscal year as well as next year. And Ray or John, if you want to um, talk a little bit more about those. You want to take it, John, or do you want me to? Go ahead, Ray. You're more okay. Um, I don't see Ray Carlson, so I'm going to do the best I can to be a proxy. Yeah. Um, on the, there was some questions asked about the um, um, 
irrigation and what and as Missy said, we, we're basically going out for an RFP um, authorized to do about 10,000 that I believe that was at the last meeting. So we put it together. Um, it's uh, it's been through um, and I'm beating a horse already. I, I know we're not on the agenda yet, but we're also we're, we're looking at uh, the way it's written is to and uh, there was a question by one of the board members already, but the way it is written is to forward it through to the awardee after the fact to help help us uh, move through with with programs. So yes, to answer Lynn's question, that's the way that it was written and it was uh, reviewed by uh, legal. Uh, heating concerns, most of our mechanicals, by the way, are, are failing us left and right. Um, we've got, you'll see down there, we've got, we're replacing controls down in uh, the high school, the middle school. There's, um, we've got about $125,000 in um, controls throughout just that, that building alone uh, put in for capital. Now we have uh, found, there was a question whether or not we could split some of that up. We think we may have found a way to split some of that, John. Um, but uh, time will tell. We won't really know till September, October, when we get this uh, a temporary fix in place, whether or not we can spread that that cost out over several years instead of two, over several more years instead of two. But most of the controls are proprietary, and they're they're kicking us in the pants, so to speak, uh, in terms of as each one fails, it's basically shutting systems down and um, not not helping our cause let's put it put it that way um greg can i ask a, a clarifying question so when you talk about controls you're talking about like air uh the heating air conditioning yes you know and ventilation controls. It, it controls it allows us to turn certain segments on and off heat ventilate um, basically the fixes that we did last year to meet covid really crippled us in the long run. We're still running, we're still up to code, but um, it's done a number on our on our controllers, number one. We've had many of them fail. As, as, and what we've had to do also is um, put in some fixes to keep us running. Let's put it that way. All right, so we've had no choice in some of this. And basically with them being proprietary, Every time we bring in the previous source, it's $1,500 right off the top just to give a quote to fix them. Or reprone, just to get the quote. So every quote is an ad another $1,500. Does the $1,500 then go towards the repair? Possibly. It depends what the repair is. So there's a lot of, because they're not, the, the new source, I mean, the, the former source um, is no longer used, and I and I'm not. I don't want to disparage the former source. Don't get me wrong, it, but it was proprietary to them. Okay, what we're using now, what we're replacing the the former con, the former controllers with, would be a Honeywell controller, which is more of a general uh, um, controller throughout the industry. So it, it it does help. We don't. We're not. We're not tied to one source. Let's put it right. that way, in terms of being able to use them. So no, this proprietary pattern will not continue then, but the correct okay. That's what we're trying to get away from. Okay. Okay. And I, I just want to interject one minute. It's important to, re to to note that our systems are still working to code. An example, because of the exterior air we had to pull in for COVID parameters, it literally jiggled you know, one of our controllers until it fell off. So everything, so the system is working, but the controllers, so I just wanted to make sure that that was yeah. clear that we are still absolutely up to code, you know, with all of our air quality in terms of COVID. Um, but, but that's then, when, yeah. when race it, it put a, yeah. But the demand, the demand of, the, of, of COVID air quality mm. has really yeah. taxed the system. Yes. Yeah. And Ms. Ian, this is Ray Carlson. Oh, good. Ray's here. Hey, Ray. I would just like, I want to add one thing, is that what we've done is we did not have to do the temporary fixes. We were able to get what we needed to do for the front, the, the main controllers, and we were able to change those out already with money that we're using from the COVID money okay. and some others without hitting capital at this point. 
the money that's been put into capital is as we have to start thinking about changing the controllers on each unit and compressors and other items that are, are failing as we go future because there's a whole new law, a whole new set of bills coming out through DPH and CDC. Now COVID, what is going to be changing the parameters of the air quality in the schools? Systems. We're losing you, Ray. Yeah. We lost you, Ray. <laughs> oh, boy. Mm. Well, I'm, I'm sure he will rejoin. And one of the reasons we wanted to bring the capital plan forward at this time is because it still gives us some time to go back and ask questions before we need to you know, approve um, through the board and then present at the September 21st Board of Finance meeting. So we want to make sure we at least put this initial draft, you know, up in enough time. Now I've lost Missy. Yeah, we lost Missy now too. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> hey, um, uh, well, she's there with her mouth open frozen. So I guess I'll jump jump in and just ask Ray, you know, we, we've heard this in the past to be able to do what we need to do to keep the systems running. You know, we've been bringing in cold air the whole time for filtration and heating those things. Can we, Do we have any of the uh, COVID money that we could use? Because it seems to be some COVID relations or are we spending it all elsewhere? No, we we have in ESSER three, we have $20,000 earmarked to help us out. Okay. This is where we're, we're going to be spending that. Um, there's some, and I'm trying to use the right word, but there are some fixes that Ray can do uh, with that 20000 to actually help us throughout the next couple of years. And this would oh, be I, that'd be awesome. I mean, Ray makes 20000 and a 50000 so that's that's good, the work that they do for us. Yep. So, so that'd be good to hear that there'd be, you know, could be some help there because there's no question, you know, it's had an impact. Yep. And I think that'd be a question, you know, the Board of Finance could have of us is all of a sudden, you know, we do have these problems. Uh, you know, we have a five-year plan is for us to look out five years and and not just be get bombarded by something all at once. So. Yep. It may be a type of thing, you know, we, we may look at, see how we could be, you know, more helpful if we're asking for too much or if there's a difficulty with it. But I, I appreciate, I hope Ray gets back on I and I'll reiterate what Missy said is we've been doing everything we could to keep these buildings up to code, running smoothly, safely, effectively. And I think our results have showed it and we're gonna certainly- uh, I'm back. Okay, Ray's back. <laughs> okay, Ray. Yes. Not sure where you left off there, but we are listening to you talking about, you know, the situation and the COVID relations to it. Just to switch that up is what we're doing without trying to spend all the money all at once is as things change, we're going to have the capabilities to change with them. Mm -hmm. Well, I think you've had a track record of doing that since you've been here, Ray. So I, I wish you luck. I think you're doing a great job with it. Because we, we all know that our heating and ventilating has been Achilles heel long before COVID came around. And uh, we've been working pretty well with it. So I appreciate what you've been able to do this year. And uh, we'll look at these things to do what's necessary for next year. We, we lost, no, there he is. We lost him again. He shows that he's on, but I don't, I'm not hearing him. Okay, how about questions? Uh, okay. Any questions from board members? Well, we got Ray and, and Ray on. I just wanted to say there is some there is some earmarking here for the fields um, mm -hmm. in, in years 20, 20, 21 to 22 and 22 to 23. Are those just placeholders, Ray, because you're waiting for people to come back with bids on the RFP, or is this money that's going to be expended? These, these were put in prior to us putting up, putting in the RFP, to be honest with you. Liz. Okay. I mean, <laughs> um, if the, it, let's say they come back and say for $25,000, we could do this, this, and this on the irrigation. That's, that's one of the reasons why I left it in there this, this time. Um, okay. We, if they come back and say, it's going to take a million dollars to do it, obviously everything in here gets shifted way. Right. Mm -hmm. So 
it, 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 like you said, it is a placeholder and nothing more at this point because okay. the, the cost has escalated through the roof. That's why we went for an RFP. We need to get right. a real cost structure. So. And don't we have the dates where we hope to have the information on the RFP before the end of December? Yes, yes. Okay, good. That'd be good because maybe come springtime we can we can look at this to get something started anyway, make some progress. Hey, okay, thanks, Lynn. Good question. Anyone else? Thank you. I mean, I know our Amanda and Rick. <laughs> this five-year plan is something you may have seen before. It's something we work with the Board of Finance uh, to try to give them a five-year outlook for capital items that would be purchased just once of items that are over five thousand dollars would be considered a capital item that doesn't get used up in one year that so has years to last. Uh, just to let you three know, being new, I did mention to the board members previously that the Board of Finance is considering upping that number uh, from $5,000 up to a higher number. Uh, that number hasn't been adjusted in many years, and I know they've looked at other districts. Uh, if they do that, which they certainly could, and uh, it would have more of an impact on then our operating budget is going to have to cover these items if we can't get them in capital. Uh, so that's something just to be aware of in the future. But with that said, anyone have any other questions or comments? I know with our, our new people and discussions, uh, you know, we, we, can, we won't approve this until our next meeting anyway. Uh, we can move things around. It, it is a plan. It's supposed to be something that we can move around and play with, but it does give a five-year outlook. And I think it has all of us looking out in the future, which is a good thing. Uh, I'm glad to see all the maintenance we're having and looking at these fields. I think it is a time where the town is looking at our resources we have, and it's probably a good time for us to do an assessment of everything we have. I would. Um, I do have one comment or question. Go ahead, um, go ahead, Rick. For us new folks, would it be possible? I mean, I, I can see spreadsheets all day. Would it be possible to kind of get a, a walk around with somebody just to kind of lay eyes on things? Um, just to get a really good understanding of everything? Well, you know, when I, I don't know when the next facilities meeting is, but usually that's a good time, Rick, when we have a facilities meeting, they can go walk to facilities. I agree with you. I always like to see the problems. When I go there and see the tennis courts, yep. go there and see the baseball fields or see the condition of the buildings, uh, you're right, it's a good time for a walk through it. And, you know, if, if we wanted to, we do have three new board members, uh, you know, I'd be happy to set that up with someone and take them through a walkthrough. You know, I don't think, I think that's a good idea. Then you know what we're talking about. Uh, you know, you'll see some of those dinosaurs we have in high school that are heating and cooling the place, but they do do it, but they're costly. So that's a good idea because I don't know when the next facilities meeting will be, Rick. So let, let's see if we can do that uh, when Missy's back. And, you know, I think it's a good idea. John, what do you think? John Corcoran? Got to unmute yourself. Sounds good. Okay. And that way, Ricky, and if Art's got some time, and Amanda, I think that's a good idea. Okay? Yeah, we'll do that. Okay? Okay. Anything else on this until next meeting? Again, we, we need to approve a next meeting. Uh, we can't present it to the Board of Finance without Board of Ed approval. And, again, it is a fluid document. And I guess one last thing I'll say for, again, the three new board members uh, previous to this year, we used to have under technology is where we purchase all our Chromebooks. And that's been something we've looked at the past two years. And we've, we've taken that out of our capital. Uh, we, and we're using Chromebooks. We're taking out of our operating budget now because we use so many of them. They become like textbooks. You know, they're not big capital items anymore. So we took those out of the five-year plan and we cover them under our regular budget. Okay. Anyone else? Any questions? Otherwise, I'll move on for now. These numbers are so big, I'd like to move on. Something something better? <laughs> okay. Moving from the capitals plan, we'll go to item three, superintendent's report. If Missy's uh, back on working, unmuted. Missy? Yes, I'm here. I'm always working, Mr. Paskowitz. <laughs> I know you're working. I don't know if your system is working, though. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, so in, I, I just wanted to also share here for Art and Rick and Amanda, if at any point you want, are you not able to hear me? 
So I was going to say, excuse me, Missy, I, I just wanted to present to the board and the community uh, your comment about you are always working. I won't say where you are, but she is on vacation. And, you know, and I'm getting emails from her today and she's in a meeting tonight. She's on vacation. I just want everyone to know this is her vacation. Go ahead, Missy. Continue. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's vacation with a beautiful view. So that's OK. There you I, go. <laughs> Um, for our new board members, if you ever want to walk around the buildings, you know, separate from even looking at the facilities, um, you know, we'd be happy to arrange that. Um, I think it's important that you, you know, uh, some of you haven't perhaps been in all the buildings, some have been in few, but at any point, just reach out and I'd be happy to arrange that with principals or myself to take you through the building. So, okay. Um, first uh, order of business is to introduce or acknowledge the new staff members we have that are joining us. Julie Noons will be high school English language arts teacher. She will be in the 0.8 capacity. She's filling in, um, she's took take the place of a, of a resignation. We have a new high school math teacher also um, hired due to a resignation. His name is Thomas Newman. We also are welcoming a Seymour School Secretary or Administrative Assistant, Laura Namnow. Laura has uh, been in district in another capacity, so we're happy that um, she is staying on with us and joining us in her new role. Um, as you know, the building secretaries are a major um, role and responsibility in our buildings. We all also have hired Mary, who goes by Molly Drenzik. She was a long-term sub uh, for speech and language pathologist last year, and she has been hired as full-time. We are also welcoming back Dawn Flanagan. Uh, she was a paraprofessional in district and is returning to us. We are happy to see Dawn back with us. And uh, finally, for this week, we have Rebecca Bramley, also hired as a paraprofessional. She was also in district in another role and decided she loves working with us and, and with the school. So she is going to be with us as a full-time paraprofessional. So uh, welcome to those six new members. And we are still hiring for a few other positions. So at our next board meeting, I will be welcoming a few more new names. Mm -hmm. Hey, welcome. Everybody. Welcome, everybody. Welcome That's everybody. exciting to hear. She's going. Oh, Missy, you're muted now. OK, oh, she's coming back. I'm, I'm yeah, I'm back. I'm trying, okay. to juggle, I'm trying to juggle a whole bunch of uh, tabs. OK, so the next um, order of business is what we were talking about, the RFP for our athletic fields. So I will pass that over to Mr. Engel, our business manager, please. OK, what you see in front of you is about uh, eight or eight or nine pages of an, of an RFP. Um, um, it, it, it was reviewed by uh, Kyle, who was actually modeled, believe it or not, after Simsbury. They did something very similar. Uh, probably two, maybe three years ago. Um, so it was modeled after them. I, I'm not going to reinvent the wheel if I don't have to. Uh, but we did have legal take a look at it and they made some suggestions. I noticed I did miss a couple of dates on like on the very the, about the third or fourth paragraph down that should be August 27th. I'll be putting this out so we can get get, get I'll be getting it posted to be on business as well so that we can get some responses. But you have any questions basically i tried to cover all the questions and concerns and put them in and list them and those would be on page um I believe on page it starts on page three at the bottom of the scope of work and it goes through page four and most of page <clears throat> five half of page five so but I tried to cover most of the concerns that the board members had to make sure that I didn't miss anything on, on, on my notes. So, but if there, you have any other questions or concerns, um, we're hoping to have, have it awarded sometime in late September at the latest so that it'll give the consultant several months to uh, do what they need to do, come up with some uh, recommendations. Any questions, concerns? 
I'd like uh, basically. I don't think it, I need approval because you did. Uh, it did bring it back to the board for final review. But if you want to put it as an approval, fine. If not, um, it's, it's your call. But uh, it's an RFP that it, that it basically was authorized to put together. Um, yeah, we approved an RFP already. Go ahead, Michelle. I, a question on number um, eleven. <clears throat> um, you're going to make me think about my notes now, aren't you? No, on 11. <laughs> no, that looks really good, right? I just, my eye was drawn to the words um, develop clear community and EGBOE goals for the recreational system that incorporate improvements to athletic fields and athletic facilities of the EGBOE. Um, would I mean so are you envisioning then the person who who um, you know applies for this RFP or responds to it or is, is the one we grant it to would they then outline a way to uh, get that community uh, feedback that's part of the scope that they get some community feedback to see what so should what, we what, expand on that to say you know like conduct um, focus groups or contact you know sports officials in town or you know sports um communities in town and and in the schools the coaches i don't i mean it's it's a broad it's good that it's broad because it captures a lot of things but I'm, I'm looking at number five on the next to last page um oh is that okay sorry no i'm just i'm just reviewing to see so if i covered question. that in that in that part of the scope no, I mean, I could go into more detail on that, but I purposely left it somewhat. Let me, I approach, yeah, no, I'm going to back I, up a little bit. I approached the town and asked them if they wanted to be part of this. They said they already did something like this several years ago. So my, there was a no th thank you, but no thank you. Okay. Response. So my, that's why I, uh, that's why I left it kind of, open because I don't want to I don't want to make it to the point that we have to bring the town in if they don't want to be part of it but I do want to make it broad enough for the for the whoever we get to give us some suggestions to to make whatever improvements we as the board see necessary so I mean I'm thinking of the community of the families of the you know the children that play <laughs> sports on you know in our school so yes the town may have already, you know, say thanks, but no thanks, or they've done something which right. I'm a little mystified about. But anyway, um, but to have this um, group, whoever, you know, responds to this RFP to say, you know, um, you know, maybe just a couple more words in 11 to say develop clear, you know, school community um, outreach for feedback, you know, from the, the families that, um, have you know their children play on these fields and their children use these um, facilities so different than the town parks and rock who utilize the fields and utilize the things in town i would like to see whoever I'll, I'll I'll so i just uh, just under the a scope of work there's a paragraph that addresses community engagement and the expectations for whoever uh we end up hiring to um to uh, revise these fields. Um, it says the consultant is expected to attend a project kickoff meeting with um, Board of Ed staff, including the facilities director, to conduct a review and inventory of the athletic fields and courts, conduct interviews with key stakeholders and community engagement sessions on site. So there is a, there is a yeah. okay. comment there. Oh, yep. Sorry, Lynn. I, yeah, you're right. I didn't, I just went to the, the line items, but that does kind of encompass what I'm, what I'm feeling, uh, you know, what I was thinking, my intent to make sure that, you know, the coaches, the community stakeholders, the parents, that you know, the um, booster club, the people that, you know. I wanted to make sure everybody had, had a say, yeah. like you, you did. Mm -hmm. I just, I, if you notice, I was thumbing through pages. <laughs> my speed reading doesn't always work well. No, <laughs> and obviously I sped as Speed read too fast because I skipped right over the Heartland identified. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Art, go ahead, Art. Unmute yourself. Um, is it possible to get access to the town's uh, plan that they they participated in a couple of years ago? 
I don't know exactly when it was. Um, I could ask the town. If they I think it might be, it. be helpful. If you know, We're going to put out our RFP, and in the meantime, we can review what they've already done. So when, it, when a, a vendor comes back and says, hey, we want to think about this stuff, we can kind of compare the two that have already been done. might give us some insight on what uh, other people are thinking. I think Nicole is on. Maybe she could get it for us and uh, send it. To, um, I'll touch base with Nicole and Jim tomorrow and see if they can send me a copy of their their, their study that they did. Yeah, the, the yeah. selectman's office. Is that, that's what you're referring to, Ray? Right, right. right. Yeah, right. yeah I, I'd agree with Art's recommendation. Uh, I think I'd like to see what they had. I, I also know there's lots of people in town that will tell us exactly what we need to do. Uh, I'm wondering whether we would want to start with a committee of people. I, I look at this, and I've been around for a long time. If we're going to spend up to $10,000 just for a re report to tell us things that we already know, people aren't going to be happy. And be honest, I'm not happy because we won't get anything done then. Uh, I, I think there are a lot of people in town. I'd love to see that report, but I, I think uh, maybe we, we can have an open night and just let people come and just talk about our fields and hear about that would be something I think would have value for us because this looks like we're going to come up with this big grandiose plan that I know I'm going to be long gone before I ever see it uh, happen. I'd rather see some things, uh, a little bit of something's better than nothing. Yeah. Uh, I'll bring you back to the renovation project many years ago. There was thoughts of putting a $700,000 track in, and I was proposing, why don't I just put a $200,000 stone dust track in from Golasso? Mm -hmm. But because companies aren't into doing that type of thing anymore, we ended up doing nothing. And Windsor Locks has had a stone dust track forever, and it works very effectively. And still here in East Granby, we, we have nothing. We have irrigating the baseball field the Board of Ed's had on their five-year plan since 2006. That's what I was going to say, 2006, yeah. and it's been... And I don't, an RFP, I think, has some value, but I'm concerned about its cost because, again, there are lots of people in this town, I think, that have done sweat equity on fields and things that would tell us what we need. And when I look at, like, going in All Grove School, I know Park and Rec has talked about wanting to do something there. So we shouldn't do anything, I think, isolated from them. I mean, think Art's point of seeing what they've done and – you know, maybe talking to Park and Rec, maybe they'd have, I would think they would have some interest in this as well. And if we go into it together with them, I think we also have, you know, more potential to see something productive that we're going to agree upon and get done. That's my only thought. I just hate to spend $10,000 to get something that's, we already know. If, if that's the case, Bob, why don't we just go with our capital plan? Spend the money on the irrigation. Um, my recommendation there: dig a well and not use city water, because you're gonna you're gonna just put potable water back in the ground. Definitely digging a well back there. There's water is gonna be easily accessible. Yeah, I'd be for that, but I would love to have a community discussion on it because again, I I believe these facilities are community facilities. The community uses the tennis courts all year long, and we, the school uses them in the spring for nine weeks of tennis and for phys ed classes. Uh, I think these fields are used by all of us and, and I think all of us have to be involved with what this plan is gonna be because the Board of Ed can never afford to do some of these, these things we're talking about. We couldn't even irrigate the field since 2006. So I don't wanna get a grandiose plan. I just wanna throw out my two cents worth. I always believe something's better than nothing. And I think there are a lot of people in town that would give us some good insight of recommendations. They've been around and uh, some of them are quite knowledgeable. So I'm not opposed to any of it. Just wanted to throw that out to the board for discussion. Like a good idea to me. Yeah, I mean, always, uh, you know me, at community involvement, you know, the must, as much as we can tie them into the process, the better, I, I agree. I would like to see whoever, what vendor gets this RFP you know, maybe gives us a little discount and puts some of the 10,000 towards, you know, doing some work with them. Maybe. You know, that would be a real, you know, anytime you can, you know, make a deal with someone if they put, you know, yeah. skin in the game and, you know, give you something towards the project. Cause I know people will just kind of, when they hear about this, will be like, oh my God, we've been saying for years, you know, how to do things or what we need. And 
Now they have to have somebody tell them what they need. But, I, you know, it's a very um, prudent thing for us to do to have a scope mm -hmm. of work done. Um, I would be really curious to see what the um, Parks and Rec or whatever that, you know, the town had mentioned that they had done a report mm -hmm. so much so that they said thanks, but no thanks to participate in this. Um, so, yeah, that's those are my thoughts. So anytime we can involve the community, great. I mean, I could contact the uh, Park and Rec's director and talk to them about it and uh, see what they think. Just bring in some community people ahead of time. Art, you had a question? Go ahead. No, I just want to follow up with you. I, I, I completely agree. Having coached uh, several sports here in town for many years, you know, I could give you pros and cons, but I think bringing in more stakeholders, you know, the folks that have been volunteering and, and putting in the work, I'm, I'm sure they would be more than happy to sit down and not make it a grievance fest, but make it a collaborative effort to to, to make things better. So I'm, I'm right. agreeing with that. And they'll feel part of it. State money. Yeah. So how are we going to proceed? We're going to get the report that the Parks and Rec Department has, and then we're going to set up a community meeting. Yeah, let me talk to Park and Rex before our next meeting. I'll talk to Ray and see where we can uh, see where where they're at and see if I get all, get all that report. Or Frank and Shriver of the Town. I'll check with Park and Rex uh, because you, you, I, you know the question is going to come up. If we do all this, why didn't we look at the park? You know, and all the land they've got up there. And I know they. You mean East Granby Farms? East Granby Farms. Thank you, that park. East Granby Farms. And I know they, they've got some ideas. So we, we should get on the same train together and, and look at this. I think the community would be uh, grateful for it. So well, my, uh, what I'll do then is I will not post the RFP. At this time, then I, I will I will hold off. Okay. Well, we wait till next meeting. Uh, if, if board feels, I I'm not trying to push you delay. I don't really no, don't want no. to delay things either. I it, it's it takes time and effort to, to put this out and to accumulate and respond to all the questions. And at fiscal year end, I'd rather have the extra time to work on that if that's the case. Mm -hmm. If we're if we're gonna, I don't want to. Basically, I'm gonna sum it up to say. And this is where my bluntness comes in, and I apologize if it sounds that way. I don't like to spin my wheels if I don't think it's going to come to fruition. Right. So this is the one thing two years ago when you hired me, I said I'm very blunt sometimes, and I do apologize for it. I just, I'd rather me spend my time where it's going to be more fruitful at this point. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I agree. Sure. Fun. Yeah. Um, so maybe we can give Ray yeah. an answer. Maybe we can have an answer for you by the next time we meet. Okay. We will. Some I'll of these things will have been set and in I'll motion. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions, too. I mean, it's, that's yeah. not the case. So, okay. I just had a comment on the insurance section. Yep. Um, it, it all looks great to me, except uh, then the second to the last paragraph, it says <laughs> all policies shall be kept in a forced during the duration of the project and there, there's a comma and it says with an extended reporting period of 36 months the concept of an extended reporting period it really deals with claims made insurance coverage not occurrence based insurance coverage which is what we would want so i would strike everything after that comma um and maybe put in um well, I can't think of what to put in, but I, it, it's mis, it's mixing up concepts here that I don't think we want to mix. Okay. I'm going to, I'll, I'll hold this and then when we're ready to put it out, we'll, I'll, we'll make sure. Yeah. And I think you should talk to Kyle about that too. And I'd be happy to talk to him as well okay. about what I find um, sort of a little, little off on that language. Hey, thank you, Lynn. Thank Isn't you, Lynn. I appreciate it. Yeah. Expert in our midst. <laughs> okay. Anyone? Anyone else? I didn't mean to put a detour there, but uh, I wanted to bring that up anyway. Anything else on that for now? I'll get back to us for our next meeting. Hey, then we'll go to item four: committee reports. And I just like to say before we go through this, uh, for our Amanda and Rick, if you look at these committees, if something uh, is of interest to you, just email me. We can put you on it. It's usually in January. When the board votes for its officers, uh, they usually then put together the uh, committees for the year. Uh, I'd like to say item 4B, the budget committee. We're all on the budget committee. Uh, we all do the budget when it comes through. Uh, but these other items, if you have an interest in them, uh, you can let me know. 
because again, we could we could use some help with those committees. Uh, first, uh, Missy, did you want to do a follow up on the policy committee? I know you sent out emails to us, and I sure. responded. We have a, yes, we have a policy subcommittee meeting on uh, Thursday, the twelfth. We're just uh, confirming the time on that. The time, okay. So you'll send something out around about that. She'll send something around to the policy committee for that. I know she's been sending us around. We've been trying to set up a date. We're down to Thursday. We're just trying to get a time when we can go. Uh, if you're not part of a committee and you'd like to just come and see what the committee does, any board member is certainly welcome. Okay, anything new on the budget? Uh, we'll be approving uh, financials in a few minutes. I don't think there's anything new on the operating budget. Uh, I'll, the one thing that I do want to say is that we are reconciled with Kelly. Um, the 17 million 19 thousand does match Kelly's expenditures. We have 78 thousand encumbered uh, for the previous fiscal year that we're working off. One of them is about a 35 thousand dollar purchase order for the furnace uh, reconstructing at the high school. One of the other issues that we ran into, um, and uh, we've got um, several other POs that are software related and a few things like that. But um, overall. We've uh, made some big improvements. We should be able to close out. And I'm not going to, if I give you a date, I'm going to be sticking my neck out. But uh, we should be, let's put it this way. We closed everything out in late October, early November. I think we're going to move that up by about 30 to 45 days. So we should be in much better shape. Um, overall, oh, we have, oh, just to, you know, the room uh, at the, um, that they're looking to put soundproofing in. We're working mm -hmm. with Dr. Salmer. He's a resident of um, of East Granby, uh, and uh, he's going to give us some. He's going to give us a student, and the student would be graded on uh, recommendations for the soundproofing of the office and that conference room across from uh, Tim Phelan's office. So mm -hmm. that, uh, they're going. We're working with working with University of Hartford. Oh, good. Oh, the acoustic department. Yeah, the yes. student oh. student project. Cool. Oh, yes. awesome. Yep. Okay. That's really everything in a nutshell. And oh, one last thing, important thing. We're doing our last training this Wednesday with one other supplemental training set up for the ESS system. So, um, and then I start uh, training employees, I believe Thursday or Friday of this week into right up through the first day of uh, school. So that will be, we should be, by the end of September, everybody should be electronically uh, submitting timesheets. So, Ray, right. can you just Ray, can you just explain the what ESS stands for in case people do not okay, know? Okay, it's, it's the uh, Munis's version of an electronic time timekeeping system. So um, we've been do going through some testing and evaluation of the system. Um, we did switch. We shut down paychecks, which basically sold, tried to sell us a bill of goods, and I, I threw them out. That was a one issue, but so we went back to our um, software. It's the Employee Self Service is the acronym for ESS, and basically it's going to give them their pay stubs. It'll tell them their uh, accrued vacations. Um, they can enter if they want to take a day off. They can put that in, and uh, it'll go automatically go to uh, the principal for approval. It'll come back over to me for a secondary approval, and then uh, over to Susan to uh, pull into payroll. So overall, um, if somebody's missing, we'll be able to tell if it's missing. But overall, everything will be electronic. Uh, there will be no more paper timesheets um, when it comes to entering time. So that's everything in a nutshell. On that. <clears throat> if you like, I, uh, I can give you a quick demo at the, at the next meeting if you like. Ray, I appreciate what you do with the budget. A few years ago, I had trouble sleeping nights because of the Board of Ed's problems reconciling with the town, and you do it monthly very effectively. Appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, moving down, uh, curriculum committee. Uh, Bob Raven Seeger is not here. Uh, let's see, is Marjorie still on? If she wanted to say anything, she could. I don't know if Marge is still sure. on or not. If Marge is on, you can speak if you'd like to, or you don't have to. 
Yes, um, I would just like hey, to say hi. I would like to say that we had an, a number of teachers, a couple dozen teachers working over the summer on various curricula. And um, I'd just like to thank them for all the hard work that they did across the board, um, math, ELA, reading, writing workshop. Um, we're very fortunate to have such dedicated people in our district. I'll second that. Thank you. Okay. Negotiations, John? John's not here tonight, so I guess nothing new on negotiations. <laughs> facilities. We've talked about facilities quite a bit with a five year plan. I don't know if John Corcoran, you have anything else you want to add? Or if Frank uh, Carlson's just, still here? No, the last last time we just worked on the uh, the projection here, the five year capital needs. Okay. So And you know, just not just new board members, but even some veteran board members, if we do a walkthrough just before school starts, yeah. and I know there's some board members that haven't been in the schools, it's a good time to, to see what's going on and see what's being done. So you know, we'll try to get this where a few of us can come in and visit. Yeah. Okay, com communication. Like I'm, I'm sorry, Lynn, go ahead. I said if it fits into my schedule, I would like to do okay. it as well. Very good, thank you. <laughs> okay, moving on, communications, Lynn, anything with communications? So I I do want to set up a meeting before school starts. My my subcommittee is basically Michelle, Missy, and you, Bob. Is there any, like, I know we're in heavy vacation season right now. Is there any week this month that's good for you, any of you? I, I will say that I'm off next week, but I'm doing a staycation just to spend some time with my girls before they go to college. So I'd be happy to be one night next week. Does that work for any of you? Uh uh, Lynn, I could do Monday or Tuesday. Okay. So the 17th. I can do any day. I think I have something on Tuesday for Monday. Ricky. Yeah, Ricky's interested. I know Amanda's interested in communications uh, too, so I'll probably step aside if people are interested. Monday and yeah, Tuesday. I'm in Cleveland on Monday and oh. Tuesday. Oh, you are? Oh, okay. But the rest of the week looks good. All right. What does the rest of the week look like for you, Michelle? Um, let's see. So I, the 18th may work, but definitely not the 19th or 20th. So I could do All right. 18th. I can do any Maybe of I'll send out an invite for the 18th. What about Amanda? Yeah. No, is that something as new board members can Ricky and I attend or? Yeah. Do you oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yep. I can do any, are you doing it in person virtually? <laughs> I haven't decided yet, but oh, maybe okay. we'll do it in person. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah. Since we're communicators and we need to, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. Wednesday. Yeah, maybe okay. you know, six-ish. I don't know if that's too okay. early for you guys, and but maybe you know. Okay, that sounds good. So I'll try. And, uh, Missy, what about you? You're always a critical piece of these meetings. I have a administrative retreat on the 17th and 18th, and we were we will not be in district. But okay. if it's later on, I certainly will drive back you know, for a meeting. Well, maybe we'll just do it on Zoom so you don't have to drive back. <laughs> no. All right, I'll send something out for the 18th then. <clears throat> or maybe I can call in, Lynn, if that's acceptable. Yeah, yes, absolutely. We'll try and make it convenient for everybody. And and just for our new board members, we did lose somebody off um, with the resignations, facilities and policy. So if that's an area of interest for anyone, we could certainly use another person on those committees as well yeah okay thank you moving on to recommended actions uh, item a if we could get a, a motion to approve june 2021 financial report then we'll discuss it i um, make a motion to approve the june 2021 financial report as presented by ray carlson i mean okay. ray, sorry. Ray ray Engel. sorry okay do we have a second for that i'll second second okay Lynn's got the second. Okay, Ray, want to talk about the financials for June? Uh, basically, we've uh, committed um, pretty pretty good, actually. Um, we've got $188,000 coming going back to the town on this. It's far more than we anticipated. And you'll notice in my uh, summary report, there were several major areas where this money uh, came from. One, we had some... Um, on the special services, student special services account, we had almost uh, 
just under sixty thousand dollars of um, services that were not needed that were encumbered. So by clearing those, um, basically put it back into the coffers along with uh, some transportation that went along with some of those services that were not required. We had a couple of students that uh, were one-on-ones that uh, for the last um, quarter and a half, uh, that transportation, that special transportation was not needed. And then there was a half a year of uh, principal uh, salary that wasn't there. So that makes up the majority of the $188,000 that you're looking at there. Okay. Um, in, in windfalls. And just so that everybody's aware, there's three items. And I don't know if yours is highlighted in yellow, but object 112, 330, and 610. Those yeah. are the items. Those items in there were um, for the COVID. Is, that's where I was maintaining most of our COVID expenses. We did not utilize uh, probably 200,000 of uh, COVID money in our non-lapsing account. So we left that there. So right now you still have $339,000 in COVID funding uh, in, excuse me, non-lapsing non -lapsing funding. So, uh, that's we, not COVID related. That's, it's, we don't, we can use the non-lapsing fund for a multitude of things. Correct, correct. Okay, so that's, we were very prudent because of COVID. We did not, we, we kept the very tight purse string this year, as you get, as you guessed. So by keeping a very tight purse string, we ate basically um, consumed those, those COVID expenses within our budget so that we didn't have to. Uh, and by, by doing that, Missy's able to utilize some of that funding that came in on the ESSER grants um, to help the students themselves instead of just paying for PPE. So that, that's one of the advantages of it. So that's really everything in a nutshell. Um, if, if you're looking at the 210 line, and I'm going uh, by memory on this, remember we budget net. So what you're seeing there is a net effect of, uh, of uh, employee um, uh, reimbursements, things like that. This is the raw report where no transfers have been made. Um, I'd like to, I like to show the raw report. Uh, so you're seeing negatives, positives, or everything that are offsetting each other. My concern is the bottom line. And that's the bottom line, regardless of where I move the funding to, will stay the same at this point. So it's going to be, we're going to end up with about $188,000 going back to the town. Yep. Any other questions? I'll be happy to hear that. Yep. I guess one question I had, Ray, item 530. Why is the telephone line so so far off? Because the at this point, the um, they put in several new lines, and the E-rate did not come in on time for us to take the credit against it. So that credit will be coming against the 22 budget. OK. <laughs> I mean, okay. Unfortunately, I understand repairs of buildings. Okay. Any any other board members have any questions, comments? Yeah, water here. Okay. Uh, seeing none, all those in favor of approving June 2021 financial report, signify by saying aye or raise your hands. Aye. 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 Opposed. Abstentions. Motion carried unanimously. Thank you. Okay, can I get a motion to approve July 2021 financial report? I'll make a motion to approve the July 2021 financial report as presented. Michelle with the motion and John Corcoran with the second. Thank you, John. Okay, questions or comments? Or Ray, you want to start? This one is relatively, year. this one is pretty simple. Early in the year, we're still in the process of encumbering um, some of our obligations that are on here. Um, there's really not a lot to tell. It was only what less than 20% of the budget yeah. accounted for at this point. So, um, other than that, I mean, it, it is what it is and we're in the process of, uh, encumbering next week There'll be a lot more uh, encumbered on here. We're creating the blanket orders for the year right now. You must have got a good price on oil. So you did pre-purchase it all. Yes, we did. It's all paid for. Good, good, good. So we're trying okay. to, the one thing we are doing is tracking uh, the gallons used so that we make sure that we 
uh, any carryover next year will consume prior to the next contract. Okay. Board members, any questions or comments? July 1st begins our new year. So like Ray said, there's not much on this yet. Okay, seeing no questions or comments, all those in favor of the motion of approving July 2021 financial report, signify by saying aye or raising your hands. Aye. aye. Anyone opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you, motion carried unanimously. Uh, item 5C, uh, do we wanna wait until next meeting to approve that? We may make a couple adjustments yeah. on it. Yeah. Okay, we'll, yeah, yeah. we'll have that on the recommended actions for next time. Yeah. Unless someone wants to make a motion to approve it tonight. <laughs> Probably best to look at it again. Okay, any agenda items for future meetings from board members that we don't already have? I, I think do uh, probably an enrollment update. It'll probably be a superintendent report item or, you know. Yeah, she'll certainly have that uh, next time. Uh, yes, I'm going to come back with, uh, you know, the park and rec results of talking with them, park and rec discussion. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else? I mean, Missy will certainly have enough things of her own. Okay, item seven, comments from visitors. Coming to the end of the meeting, if there are any comments from visitors, we're always glad to have visitors. I'm looking, seeing none. I know, we have quite a turnout. I, I mean, turnout. small turnout. That's one thing like... about Zoom. Uh, <laughs> you do get a turnout with Zoom, I, I say it's, <laughs> It's a nice turnout we get. People can participate. No. Okay. Uh, no comments. And I get a motion for adjournment. So okay, moved. John Corcoran, make the motion. Do I have a second? I'll we'll second. Land the with a second. I don't think we need discussion. All those in favor, signal for saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carried unanimously. Thank you all for being here tonight. Thank you for the community for participating. We'll see you in a couple of weeks.